Okay, so I've tried to make this video three times, but the first time my binder was showing and I hate that, so I put on a tie. And the second time, um, my dog was being crazy and I had to put her in her crate, but third time's a charm. So it is October 30th on Saturday at 125. And I just got home from an audition and hanging out with um, a friend last night. And yesterday was amazing. Um, I am officially back together with my girlfriend. Uh, she came over and we talked. We sat and just talked for about an hour, I think. And then we had discussions of the nonverbal variety. And, and then we went to lunch and it was just, it was an awesome day. Like, it was so obvious that we were both in better places in our lives and we were both just in a better place to be together. And there wasn't, there wasn't, the weirdness that there was before because when we were dating before I was waiting to start school and I was waiting to start singing and I was waiting for things and I had just had some like crazy insane drama with um, with some family and so I was just in a really bad place when we met and got together and so now things have settled down and I've established myself and so things are fine and she's fine like things have changed for her too and she's busier now and she seems happier and we both seem happier so it worked um and i'm just i'm thrilled about it i'm so excited um you know that's not to say that i'm i'm not all about going slow and being pragmatic and you know keeping my head on tight in a relationship about keeping my head screwed on. But, you know, I'm, I'm more prepared to whether, what our relationship entails. Um, and she, she has obligations that she has to fulfill. And I have obligations and responsibilities. So we can't see each other as often as, as some couples are able to. Um, and that's okay. And, you know, I think we kind of both learn to be okay with that and take the relationship for where it is right now. And that's, that's okay. Um, so it was, it was an amazing day with her and I'm just so blessed to have her as a partner. She's, she's amazing. Um, the other cool thing that happened was I bought a Packer. I'm joining the ranks of the guys on YouTube who show their dicks in their videos. Um, but this is it. Um, the cool thing is that it's not actually meant... I guess if you had to categorize it, it would be a pack and play. But the cool thing about it is that it's got this spine running down the shaft that you can mold and do things with um, to achieve pleasure during intercourse, obviously. But the cool thing is it can be a packer because it's so squishy and like you can make it lifelike like most most cisgendered male dicks hang and then you know they kind of turn to either the right or the left so you can make it, it it's totally a pack and play um the cool thing is that it was $8.95 and because there's no sales tax in Oregon, it was $8.95. And so I got my first packer for under 10 bucks, which is pretty awesome. And I have underwear that's perfect for it. Like it can just sit in there with almost no securing at all. And just not like there's no danger of it falling out and like... <laughs> flopping onto the floor during an audition or you know there's it's it's totally safe like I can almost put it in there without like I think eventually I'll have to use um like a safety pin or something to secure it but y you almost don't even have to which is also kind of cool 
Um, it's five and a half inches, which is good for someone of my height and build. Um, I see some guys who, who get Packers and they're like gigantic. <laughs> and like body type and weight doesn't always dictate how big your dick is going to be if you're a cisgendered male. So there's really no, <laughs> there's no chart that you can like download and figure out what size dick you need I don't think if that exists please correct me and tell me I'm wrong but um I see some guys who, who get Packers and they're, they're just big and ridiculous and you look like you have a boner all the time um but with this one with I wear shorts usually um year round and I do wear jeans and it creates like a bulge but it's not out of control which is nice um, so I wore it to my audition for the first, I wore it for the first time today to uh, my uh, gay men's chorus audition for a solo part. And I felt so much more confident finding and wearing a Packer. And I totally, it, it felt great. It felt awesome, finally, to, to know that there's something down there. Um, it's pretty cool. Um, for those of you who are interested in trying to find it for yourselves if you know you don't have the cash to throw into um, a real packer um, this is what the package looked like um, so check it out I'm pretty sure that you can read that x5 I think um, 30 day warranty uh, wash after each use with antibacterial soap um, pat dry with a soft towel, completely dry before sticking it in your pants, um, and use talc, which is kind of cool. I didn't, now that I think of it, that's probably, probably a good idea. And it's by Blush Novelties, right there. So, if you're interested, um, and you're poor like I am, but you need a dick, um, that's probably the best thing you're gonna find for that cheap um, and I just walked into a sex store um, a little shop and found it so if, if you you know I know there are a lot of guys who can't they might still live with their parents or they're living in a situation where they either need to be stealth or they can't have things like shipped to their homes so that's also a good alternative if um, if you're looking to maintain anonymity and safety. So do that if if that's what you need. Anyway, um, so yeah, that's that's my dick. I'm pretty excited about it. Um so that's it. I'm back together with my girlfriend. I have an awesome dick um that was cheap. I'm getting a tattoo tonight, which is exciting. Um I'm getting it, I think I'm gonna get it on my right forearm. And what it is, is it's the word Hoyotaho, which is the battle cry in Wagner's Die Valkyrie. Um, it's that, for those of you who don't really know opera, it's, um, it's where the, the image with the fat opera singer, with the, um, my background um, on my channel, the background image, the stereotypical fat opera singer with the horns and the metal bra and the pitchfork. Um, that's what she sings. That's her little battle cry. And the cool part about this tattoo, not only does it does it kind of display that I love Wagner and, and opera and all of that superficial shit, but it also connotates for me kind of tipping my hat to um, my former identity and still to some degree my identity as a butch lesbian. Um, because Hoyotaho is something that females say. It's a female thing because German is a gendered language and um, actually I should probably do more research about that but it's something that a female says and so having that on my forearm um, to me signifies that I'm tipping my hat to this identity and it's kind of my own, my own little battle cry for the world. Like, 
I'm not going to take anybody's shit about about who they think I should be or what my identity should be or what my label should be. This is who I am, and if you don't like it, you can just blow it out your ear because I'm not interested. Um, and pertaining to that, <laughs> I heard, I'm not really supposed to like talk about it, but recently in the in the community here, um, I've been hearing whispers about like um, lesbians catching flack for singing opera and when they're not on stage wearing men's clothes and I've just heard horror stories about um, female-bodied, cisgendered females being um, tormented for their for their identity as lesbians, and that makes me very sad. And I hope it's not true. Uh, but if it is, I'm writing a letter. <laughs> so um, yeah, I hope that's not true. That would that would be. It and it doesn't even make me mad. It just makes me. It, it saddens me that people are still so close-minded that in in almost every other vocation in the United States it's okay to be out as as gay or lesbian or bisexual or any flavor in between those things um but and and, in, and it blows my mind because opera is replete with gender confusion so why, <laughs> if, you're, if you identify as a lesbian or trans or whatever, why you, an opera of all things, why you would be shunned for that, ugh, it just makes no, no sense at all. Um, and I hope it's not true. So anyway, um, for the rest of the day, I'm going to be domestic and play some Halo and get psyched up to get this tattoo. And I'll, I'll make a video um, when I come home after I have it done. Uh, so yeah, um, that is all. And I will talk to you guys later. Bye.